Hello and welcome to the part one of the AMCI Media Redundancy Protocol tutorial. In this part, first we're going to do some brief introduction to the network topologies and then after that we're going to focus more on the basic concept of a ring topology utilizing Media Redundancy Protocol. So let's start with the brief introduction to network topologies. We have uh, different network topologies, but we can say we have those common ones or basic ones, just like star, linear, or ring topology, and some others, to name a few, like tree, mesh, or hybrid topology. Those other network topologies are based on those uh, basic topologies. They're either modified or just their combination. So we're going to focus more on those basic ones. So let's start with star topology. As you can see from this uh, picture, we have an Ethernet switch as a central point and all other devices are just connected to the ports of the Ethernet switch. And this is one typical industrial setting. We have PLC that controls all other devices or some machinery. So advantages of star topologies are that it's relatively easy to add or install additional device. Simply, you need to have some extra port on the Ethernet switch, so you can simply add the additional device. Also, we can consider as the advantage if, just in this small animation, you can see that device 4 is disconnected from the switch. All other devices still communicate to the PLC, so it means that you can relatively easily remove or add the additional device. And also, from this viewpoint, also it's easy to detect what of devices is, is failure or the disconnected from the Ethernet switch, so it's relatively easy to, the, to troubleshoot them. And then also, we have disadvantages. Disadvantages is the requires more cabling than linear topology. So obviously, you know, if you have that some uh, industrial setup with some Ethernet switch that is uh, mounted somewhere in the cabinet, and then you have that PLC and all other the devices all over the machinery, then you have to drag the cable from each device back to the Ethernet switch. They're, of course, being exposed either to some mechanical damages or electromagnetic noise. And also, if switch as a central point fails, the whole network is going to be failing. And on top of it, because we have some extra cabling, we have to have that Ethernet switch, which adds to the overall cost of the, of the whole network. The next is linear topology. As you can see, in this topology, devices are simply daisy-chained. So, in that case, each device must have, obviously, a at least two ports, which means that each device ha has to have the integrated Ethernet switch. The advantages of linear topologies are that devices with a built switches are widely available, just like all of the AMCI devices, network devices. Then, of course, it requires less cabling that with star topology, so we don't have to drag those cables all the way back to the Ethernet switch, back to the cabinet. Simply, we can find the next device uh, available and daisy-chained. And then, external switch are just optional if we want to extend the network. Also, there are some disadvantages of linear topology. One of them is a line depth limitation. So, what it is? As we said before, each device must have integrated Ethernet switch, which is going to cause some update time delay. For example, if we have so-called uh, store and forward type of a switch, it's known that seven of those devices in a daisy chain going to cause about one milliseconds of the update time delay. So we have to consider it if we have a huge number of devices in daisy chain, how much of the time delay they're going to uh, cause. The next one, it's, I would say, the major one, as you can see from this small animation. If you have either device or just line broken, everything downstream is going to be disconnected from the network. And obviously, that's a big, big issue. So, we would like to use all the advantages of linear topology utilizing integrated switches, but we need a solution to overcome that major disadvantage caused by failed connection or devices. So, the ring topology could offer such a solution. 
So let's see how the ring topology can be a solution that we are looking for. If we simply convert the linear topology to the ring, closing up the loop, it won't help because we're going to have situation with all those uh, packets and the frames spinning around in the ring endlessly, eating up all the, all the bandwidth. So obviously the solution is not that simple. So what it means? It means we need some uh, kind of a mechanism that's going to keep a loop-free ring topology, so not allowing all the data spinning around for one. And the next uh, task is to monitor the ring and detect any communication interruptions and then quickly switch from one uh, topology to the next one. Such mechanism is offered by media redundancy protocol managed by Profinet uh, protocol. So, to summarize, such protocol or mechanism must be able to maintain loop-free ring network, monitor links, detect interruptions, and finally switch to an alternative path as quickly as possible. So the media redundancy protocol is specified for the ring networks with up to 50 devices. It guarantees fully predictable switchover behavior and, which is very important, it's based on IEC 62439-2 standard, which makes it manufacturer independent. Some of the benefits of the media redundancy protocols are that a failure of individual device has no influence on the communication, which increases plant and machine availability. Also, scheduled maintenance or repair can be performed with no time pressure, since the plant does not need to be shut down. And in the case of network failure, troubleshooting is accelerated due to fast network diagnosis. Now, we're going to introduce some terminology that we'll be using in the, to this tutorial. So first, a node, so each device participating in the ring topology with its uh, integrated uh, Ethernet switch is represent one node in this topology. So one of the nodes must be uh, playing role of the manager, so that's the single node that it has the role of to monitor and control the ring network. Then obviously all other uh, nodes or other devices participating in topology is going to play a role of the clients. Also, we have a ring port. So those two ports, they're connected in the, with the, inter, in the integrated Ethernet switch and participating in the ring topology, we call them a ring ports. Ring ports could have a few states. One is the forwarding, maybe you can say normal, that all packets received by the port are forwarded. Then you have one that is very important, so-called a blocking state. So all packets received by the port are dropped, except for those that are part of the MRP protocol. And we have the disabled, so which means that all packets received, regardless of its origin, is going to be dropped. The ring itself has two states, it should be pretty much obvious. So one is the closed, so when the ring is closed, that's normal operation, no errors, or open, when the ring is open due to link, or some of the clients failure in the ring. So here we have that one example of the ring that, that is managed by the media redundancy protocol, and we have that, as we said, we have to have at least one the media redundancy manager represented with that yellow box, and all other devices are clients in the ring. So let's see how the protocol works. So this is an uh, example when we have normal operation, the ring is closed. So the redundancy manager sends a test frames on both of its ring ports to detect possible errors in the network. So what we have, we have situation with those two ports of the manager. From port one and port two, we have those test frames. So from, let's say, port one, we have test frames going all the way through the whole ring and received by the manager on the port two. And also at the same time, it sends uh, test frame from the port two and it goes to the whole ring and received by port one. So that means how it uh, managers all the time monitor the health of the, of the ring. Those test frames are made with special MAC address, so it's usually it's IEC 001. 
So each uh, the client when receives such test frame with the uh, particular MAC address simply just forwarded to, to, to the next uh, port. Those test frames are sent periodically, so usually by default interval is 20 milliseconds. Maybe some of the managers can be can allow you to, to program it, but for default usually it's 20 milliseconds. So at the very beginning, when the test frames start to go through the ring, so bo uh, from port 1 going to be receiving port 2 and from port 2 going to be receiving port 1, as soon as the master detects it, it's going to switch one of the ports into block state and the another one to be in forwarding state. So that one in block state, the, the role is to that protect from the data spinning around in the, in the circle. And of course, we need also the data because that's the whole purpose of the, of the network. So we have data frames also. They are sent only from the ring port that is in forwarding state. Here we have uh, some animation. They're going to show you part of those test frames and also data frame. So what we have, let's see that the test frames for port 1 and port 2 of the manager simply going all the way around, receiving on the opposite port, and that's how it verifies that the ring is closed. There's no problems. And of course, at the same time, we need the data to go around. So we can see the data goes, but it doesn't go to the entire loop. So what we can say that from the topology, we have still ring topology closed. Uh, and then on the logical level, from the data viewpoint, we have just a linear topology. Now let's see what's going to happen if we have open ring. So we have some failure within the ring. It could be some device that failing or the communication is broken. In this particular case, we have that uh, communication is broken between two devices. So let's see how the protocol going to detect it. As we said, we have those test frames. They're circulating to the whole uh, ring, checking the health of the ring. Now, in the case that test frames, test frames in a sequence are not received at the ring ports of the master, then master assumes there is a ring failure. Usually the length of the sequence is set to three. So in three consecutive times, if it's not, they're not received on the opposite port, it means that the ring has a failure. If you say, considering that each uh, test frame is sent every 20 milliseconds, it means that the, the ring failure is going to be detected within 60 milliseconds. Also, besides those test frames, we have that the clients also informing the master of the of the failure. So each client that detects on its its uh, port that the link is broken, sending a link down frames. Usually those set to four four times four frames back to the master, and also at that same time switch one of that particular port to to blocked one. So how that. Looks like, as I said, there's the, the client over here, for example, these two particular clients, they detect on its own ports, this one on port 1 and this one on port 2, detect the uh, broken communication, or they're going to send the, the link down frames, and also those, the, the master is going to send, keep sending those test frames, but they won't be received on the other side of the, of the other side of the port because the link is broken. So what we have, as we see, so these test frames, they are, they are not going all the way around. And also at the same time, we have information from the clients that the ring is broken. So that's how that the protocol detect there's the failure within the ring. So now after the failure is detected, we have the next stage, a topology change. So now, First, uh, master changes is redundant port from block to a forwarding state. So now both ports of the master are in forwarding states and then send several topology change frames. And as, uh, as default, it's typically three frames every 10 milliseconds. It sends from both ring, ring ports to indicate to all of the clients that topology has changed. Now, every client receiving those uh, topology change frames it has to clear its filtering database and build up again according to a new topology with a given 
time frame. Usually it's uh, 20 milliseconds. So those topology change frames and link down frames that uh, the client sends back to the master are marked uh, with a special MAC address, similarly like those uh, test frames, this time with IECC002. That is used only for the control and status messages. So how it works? Those uh, topology change uh, frames is going to be sending from the from the master. You can see now that the master, the port two that was the block state, now it's in forwarding state, and also those the clients where they detected a broken link, they're going to switch from the forwarding to the blocking state. So now we have that uh, topology change frames goes round to each client announcing uh, a topology change. By now we have the new topology established and the whole network, so all devices are ready to communicate back as before. So now what we can see that the data goes through all the devices so they can communicate again to each other avoiding that broken part of the ring. As you can see now that the master has both ports open for the communications. So now in case that we have a ring recovery, what it means, you know, those two uh, clients that detect that the, the communication link is broken between them. Now if we fix that uh, broken communication, now they detect it and they're going to react and sending the link up frames back to the master, informing master that the link now is the up, which means it's, it's fixed. Also that's by default it sent four of those uh, link up frames. So that's going to inform master now that the clients will unblock its block port and then change to the forwarding status. And then the master and clients must work in a sync, which means that now the since client changing uh, block ports to the forwarding state, now the master also had to change one of the ring ports back to blocking state. After that, again, just like before, the master is going to send the topology change frames to indicate again all clients that topology will be changed, so it's going to be changed back to the original one. And just like before, topology change frames and now link up frames are marked with the same special MAC address, IEC002, that's specially used just for the MRP control and status messages. So after that, the whole uh, uh, changeover is going to be done. Topology is going to be back to original one and we're going to have a closed ring and then everything is going to go back to the normal. And at the end of this section, there are some final notes. The time between detection of ring failure and restoring a new topology is referred as a reconfiguration time. So the maximum value for the reconfiguration time is 200 milliseconds, which means the configuration changeover is going to be done within those 200 milliseconds. It's very important to keep in mind. In case that you want to implement such uh, media redundancy protocol with uh, ring topology, you need to know that your application must be able to manage an interruption of 200 milliseconds, which means within those two milli 200 milliseconds, you won't have any data update because you have to set up your watchdog time for each device in the ring to be greater than 200 milliseconds. So that's very, very important to know. If your application is very time critical, then maybe it's not applicable in your application. Thank you for watching part one of this tutorial. We are also uh, recommending to go and watch part two that covers practical implementation of a media redundancy protocol. Should you have any question, please contact us and we would be more than happy to help you out.